flights at Linden Pinling International Airport shut down after a tornado passes through this afternoon. Good evening, Bahamas, and thanks for joining us at MB12. Coming up tonight in news, MB12 was there in the aftermath of a tornado at the airport. Police remove all traces of marijuana plants at a massive field discovered yesterday. Students at two New Providence schools sent home from school as teachers protest yet again. BC Chairman Leslie Miller says he will not support foreigners taking majority stake in the energy business and remembering a sports icon. We have those stories and much more coming up tonight. I'm Christina McNeil and your MB12 starts right now. Joining us, damage done but no injuries or lives lost as a result of tornadic activity around LPIA today, which also prompted the suspension of flights and a severe weather warning for several islands. Juan McCartney was there not long after the funnel cloud made its way through the area and filed this report. The tornado formed as air traffic controllers surveyed LPIA from high atop their perch at the air traffic control tower around 2.45 p.m. Here's what they saw. Oh my goodness. You want to buy honestly, right? Hey, oh, yeah. yeah, that's sucking up everything. Guess what? They got a couple over there. Yeah, that one close. When there's a tornado forming, I want to fish it. Get over here. Exactly. Gee, we need to get out of this tower. You see this jet? Yeah, there's a major. Woo, woo. Yeah, we're ready. There's a major here. We got to find this tower. We got to find this tower. After they saw the fully formed tornado start to move, air traffic controllers were forced to abandon the tower for their own safety, running downstairs till the system subsided about five minutes later and going outside to witness it dissipate. Like it going back up. you inside. Chief Climatological Officer with the Department of Meteorology, Mike Stubbs, said he'd gotten word from the tower that the tornado was forming, prompting the severe weather warning for New Providence, North Andros, and adjacent waters, also prompting the suspension of all traffic at area airports. Moments after he was told about it, Stubbs said he decided to go out to the runway and watch for himself. And there I saw the water spout um, emerging from a funnel, actually a funnel cloud, um, which evolved into a water spout, and eventually um, this system enlarged for, uh, for quite a few minutes and then uh, about less than five minutes it dissipated. Uh, recognizing um, the damages that can result from this kind of weather system uh, became pretty concerned and the air traffic control contacted me and said to me that they were kind of concerned as well and that uh, they left the tower in fear of their safety. Today's tornadic activity also affected operations here at General Aviation this afternoon. Several planes were overturned because of the weather, prompting police and NEMA to lock down the facility. The scene at General Aviation revealed that nine aircraft were damaged when the tornado passed over. One eyewitness described it as if paper planes were being tossed about. Superintendent Alan Emanuel, who heads the Western District, said they were working on calling all the aircraft owners and the police normally get involved in these kinds of situations. We got some of the owners, the owners of the aircraft, but so far we haven't received information or saying all the um, owners of the aircraft. We'll make all effort to see these persons who own the aircraft. We found about five of them thus far. General Manager of the Airport Authority, Milo Butler III, said the damage was thankfully contained to one specific area. All of the buildings are intact, um, all of the staff are fine, all of the passengers are fine. It seems as if from our observations, the um, damages are confined to this space here at General Aviation. Flights in and out of LPIA and area airports resume before 5 p.m. No estimate yet on how much the damage will cost. Reporting for MB12, I'm Juan McCartney. 
Well, officers of the Drug Enforcement Unit have seized $500,000 worth of marijuana plants discovered deep in bushes off Carmichael Road Monday afternoon. DEU and U.S. officials returned to the site in the early morning hours and cleared the entire field before transporting the illegal plants to headquarters. As investigations continue, so does the search for two suspects who reportedly helped to cultivate the plants. Vonnie Toot reports. Monday's discovery of well over 20,000 marijuana plants was just the beginning for officers of the Drug Enforcement Unit. More than 14 officers returned to bushes off Carmichael Road from as early as 6 this morning to begin uprooting and wrapping marijuana plants. As you can see, the site was almost clear by 10 a.m. Rest of y'all, come over here to start uprooting some of this, okay? Let's go. Information led police down this dirt road riddled with potholes and deep into bushes off Carmichael shortly before 1 p.m. Monday. There they discovered the large marijuana field. The estimated street value, half a million dollars. Pot plants ranged in height from 3 to 10 feet, towering over officers who worked into the night and arose at the crack of dawn to remove all traces of the illegal crop. So why do you have to, like, knock it like that after you no, pull it no, out of the so ground? We, yeah, do because we, it's a little lighter. We're really 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 concerned about the, the drugs and not really the, the soil, you see? Right. Yeah. There's some good soil, though. About 200 feet away, authorities stumbled upon this makeshift processing plant used to dry out the marijuana plants and prepare them for distribution. A mattress, cell phone, and large Tupperware container filled with food were also stored in the little hut, suggesting one of the culprits lived here. Anyone bring no gloves, eh? <coughs> See a Roman in gloves? See a light. What about this? Superintendent Stephen Dean says police wasted no time finding one of the suspects, a 50-year-old man. We can tell you that we do have a suspect in custody. Um, uh, Bahamian male is in custody. We also found him in the possession of a firearm. Police are actively investigating this matter. We are still looking for two suspects. And it seems the suspects went to great lengths to ensure their enterprise was never discovered. To give you an idea of just how deep in bushes marijuana plants were discovered, it took us about seven or eight minutes to drive down this dirt path to get there. And rainy weather didn't make it any easier. But for these officers, getting there was the easy part. The hard part was wrapping these illegal plants in plastic. hoisting them over their shoulders and trudging through mud and wet bushes for seven minutes to get back to the dirt road. <laughs> Dean says this significant seizure has saved countless lives. What we can tell you that based on intelligence, based on what we are getting from members of the public, the people in the Bahamas have reached this point that enough is enough, we have reached the crossroad, and as a result they are given the police intelligence. So police were able to come here, made this discovery. We can tell you that this is going to save many lives. With the discovery of this large marijuana field, we can tell you that our young people, who these drugs we will be destined to, will not be hurt by these drugs. A drug culture remains a major concern for law enforcement authorities. Last June, police found 30 marijuana fields containing $40 million worth of plants on Grand Bahama. Reporting for NB12, I'm Bonnie Toot. Four people shot in a Baldwin Avenue nightclub last night. Now police are on the hunt for two men they want to question in connection to the shooting. According to police reports, two men and two women were at a nightclub when they were approached by two armed men. Police say the pair opened fire at the group, hitting them in the legs and arms before fleeing on foot. The victims were taken to hospital where they are detained in serious condition. Anyone with information that may help police capture the men responsible for this shooting is asked to contact police at 919 or Crime Stoppers at 328-TIPS. Stephen Dillett and Uriah McPhee Primary Schools were supposed to open today after being suspended for four days 
for much needed repairs. However, to the frustration of many parents, students were still out of the classroom today as the Ministry of Education addresses lingering health concerns at those facilities. Paige McCartney went to the schools today and has this update. Here at Uriah McPhee, parents say at this stage, they're just fed up. They say it's been five days now since their kids have been out of school and they've got no clear indication as to when the school will open. They said over the weekend they were supposed to clean the mall. They get additional days from in the week to clean this mall. So how long, how long, how long um, will it take to clean just to clean the malls? Although contractors worked on clearing the school of mold over the weekend, it failed an air quality test conducted by the Ministry of the Environment yesterday, according to education officials. When we made our way to Stephen Dillard Primary School off Wolf Road, students were in the classroom, but we were told teachers were not teaching and that parents were advised to collect their kids at noon. Well, according to them, they saying that officially school is supposed to be open, but the teachers ain't teaching. Uh, they sent in the train home 12 o'clock today in any event. Ain't nothing going on in school line, sending them to school to come back here 12 o'clock to find out that they ain't had nothing to do in class. They ain't have no homework to do. That ain't school. But the minister has like a whole facility now. Yeah. They need to fix this water and fix this air condition. That's ridiculous. We as parents want to know what's going on, what's happening, what us, what, what us to do with the children, what, what the next step, what the next step to do. We met Bahamas Union of Teachers President Belinda Wilson at Stephen Dillard Primary where teachers were gathered sitting in the front of the school. Despite the Ministry of Education and the Ministry of the Environment giving the all clear for that school to resume, she said she told teachers not to work because there are still health concerns regarding fiberglass, which she said was affecting air quality and causing skin irritation for teachers. She also called on parents to take a proactive approach in this matter. The AC um, technicians are still here working. The vents are still filthy. The air is still thick in there. And uh, on top of that, there is no water in the school. So how can you work? How can you teach? How can children learn if the, if the environment is not conducive? And for God's sake, parents, come and see about your children. It always has to be as if the union is in battle with the employer. Your children are in here also. But when we spoke with Education Minister Jerome Fitzgerald this morning, he said while the ministry has advised that Uriah McPhee Primary remain closed until further notice, there's no reason why school shouldn't be in at Stephen Dillard. I mean, last time you're talking about a couple of days, it's primary school, it's not a big issue. I mean, in the Bahamas, I mean, we're quite accustomed uh, to hurricanes, the school closed for a number of days and we make the adjustment as kids catch up and so uh, that's not a major concern because our major concern right now is to ensure that when the teachers and students return that the environment is safe um, and we get the clearance from the Ministry of Environment to do so and they've been working very closely with us in this regard and as I said once the issue was brought to our attention we took it very seriously and we moved um, as quickly as we could uh, with resources, both capital resources and human resources to address the issue. Fitzgerald wouldn't comment on if teachers who didn't perform their duties today would be reprimanded, but what about the lost time in the classroom for hundreds of students? Fitzgerald said this. I'm quite amused that um, she may try to, or the union may try to make that um, an issue. We were aware of the work that needed to be done. We had the work completed. We had the Ministry of Environment in there yesterday to review it, to test the quality of the air, and they gave us the go ahead. And so we um, made the decision to school, for school to resume there. At Uriah McPhee, uh, when the Ministry of the Environment went there, they said there were still some issues that they were not satisfied with, with regard to the cleaning um, and removal of the mold. And so we did not open the school there. And those works are continuing today, and the Ministry of Environment will continue to monitor, and we will not put kids or teachers back in our school until we get the clearance to do so. Meantime, the BUT president said Naomi Blatch Primary School is also suffering structural issues. She doesn't believe that it will be ready to open on Thursday because the septic tank is open and exposed. For MB12, I'm Paige McCartney.